Hello, my name is Terry. I'm the manager of customer support. This is the Race Autocomplete interview, and we're talking about why my internet keeps disconnecting. If your internet is disconnecting, there could be several reasons. One of the biggest ones, your internet plan. With Race, we have internet plans, price points for residential customers. Um, there is the 25 megabit per second plan for people who need internet for browsing the web, checking their email, basic usage situations like that. It's not really intended for any kind of intensive internet use like streaming or downloading high definition videos, that kind of thing. If you do use the internet a lot or if you have a lot of devices, you want the one gigabit per second plan, which is 1000 megabits per second. Um, that is plenty of bandwidth to do just about anything you'd want to do on the internet. As a reference, streaming a 4K video generally takes about 40 megabits per second. So if you've got a thousand, you could be streaming video on five different TVs and not see a problem. If you are noticing that your internet services are dropping, the first thing to look at is what internet plan do I have? How much bandwidth am I paying for? If you're only on that 25 megabit per second plan, or if you're with a different provider, maybe you've got 100 or 200 megabits per second, is that enough to do the things that I'm trying to do? Sometimes the answer is no. And if you're looking at race, if you're on the 25, we can upgrade you to that one gigabit plan. And if you're not with race, maybe you should be. Second thing, change your ISP. If you are with an ISP that does not offer the bandwidth you need, or for some reason isn't providing the bandwidth that they say they're giving you, it's a good option to look for another one. Race internet in some of our newer communities offers speeds up to 10 gigabits per second. In all of our communities, we offer at least one gigabit per second, which is enough to prevent any bandwidth issues with your internet connection. If you are still having connection issues on a one gigabit per second plan, you're most likely looking at a problem with your hardware or uh, another issue related to the devices communicating with the internet rather than with the internet itself. Disable multiple network connections. What this is going to be talking about is you've got a desktop computer that is both plugged into ethernet and set up for a Wi-Fi connection that is enabled at the same time. This can cause a problem if sometimes the Wi-Fi is better than the ethernet connection. The computer will periodically check to see what the best connection available to it is, and if it sees a connection better than the one it's currently using, it will switch. While it switches, you will lose service. So if you have both ethernet and Wi-Fi, connected and the Wi-Fi is sometimes better than the Ethernet and sometimes not, you will experience intermittent service loss while your computer switches from the Wi-Fi to the Ethernet or vice versa. The other common situation is a wireless device that has the credential saved for both the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi bands. Almost all routers in the modern age, including all routers provided by RACE, are called dual band. They transmit Wi-Fi on two separate frequencies, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. The 2.4 gigahertz frequency, because it has a shorter wavelength, can transmit much further and is less affected by obstacles like walls and furniture and things. So it it is better performance over a distance. But because of that shorter wavelength, it can carry much less data. The five gigahertz, on the other hand, with the wider wavelength can carry a lot more data, but it can only go about half as far as 2.4, and it is more affected by obstacles. So if you are on a device that can use a five gigahertz band, which most devices can, you generally want to use the five gigahertz if you can. The problem happens when, for instance, you're walking away from the router to a different part of the house and you reach that line where the signal from the five gigahertz is too weak to be better than the signal it's getting from the 2.4. The device is going to swap between the 2.4 and the five gigahertz bands 
and while it's swapping, you're going to lose connection. With race equipment, the Wi-Fi bands are unified, which means that the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands have the same name. You're only saving a single Wi-Fi credential into your device, and it will make that swap on its own. But if you are seeing frequent service drops, you can contact our customer support team. They can look at your router remotely, and they'll be able often to see if that kind of situation is occurring, if that's a problem. Um, and when it is, we are able to create a new guest network on your router that is either 2.4 or 5 alone so that you can intentionally connect your device to a single band um, and avoid the situation where it's swapping back and forth. Update your wireless adapter driver. So this is another hardware device issue. Every device that uses Wi-Fi has software built into it that it uses to communicate with your Wi-Fi router. That software is referred to as a driver. Drivers can be out of date. So as router software improves, driver software will follow behind. The people who make the devices will improve their software so that they can take advantage of any improvements that have been made to router software. But many devices do not automatically update their drivers. You can run into a situation where the new router software is not fully compatible with the older driver software on your device. When that happens, you will be losing efficiency. Usually your device will still work, but it will not work as well as it could. And one of the symptoms of that is often dropping internet connection. So if you are having this type of issue and you have eliminated other possibilities, it's always a good idea to check with the manufacturer of your device to see if there is a newer version of their driver software. Resetting network settings. If you have a lot of saved Wi-Fi credentials, it may slow that device's performance. Maybe you have a credential on there for your old router and that router is still plugged in somewhere. You might have your device hopping back and forth between your new router and your old router, depending on where you are in the home. Or you might have a corruption in the software on your device, in the credential that you've saved to connect to the Wi-Fi. Whatever the case may be, if you reset your network connections, essentially erase any saved Wi-Fi credential information and re-enter it, essentially starting fresh. Anything in there that may have been causing a problem will be gone, you'll be entering a new credential. So that's always a good step to take when you're having network connection issues, often maybe even as a first step, because it's simple. The first step you should take in almost every situation is to reboot your network equipment. So on here it says modem slash router. Those are very important pieces of your network equipment, but they're not the whole story. Anything that is a part of your network connection may be what we call a failure point or a source of problems for the communication between the device and the internet. The first thing, obviously, is your modem, or in the case of fiber, like what RACE offers, your ONT. Optical Network Terminal. An ONT is the fiber equivalent of a modem. This is the device that translates the light signal from the fiber optic cable into an internet signal that your devices can recognize. The router connects to the ONT. That's the device that translates the addresses for all of your individual devices down to a single address so that it can communicate with the internet. Without a router, all of your devices are trying to talk to the internet all by themselves and there's not room for them all to communicate. The router makes sure that they're each taking their turn and they're each using their own channel so it can efficiently navigate the communication so that all of your devices can talk to the internet at once. Many people also have what's called a network switch, which is a device that plugs into your router and provides 
hardwired Ethernet connections to multiple devices from a single router port. Um, a lot of people will have mesh units like a Netgear Orbi or an Eero or a Google, uh, Google Fi. Um, these devices do the same thing as a switch, only wirelessly. They are similar to routers in that they offer connections to multiple devices, but they generally either, either a router is a part of the mesh system or the mesh units connect back to a router. RACE does provide mesh units with our routers. Each of those is also a part of your network hardware. So when you are having issues with certain devices losing connection to the internet, it could be an issue with your ONT, it could be an issue with your router, it could be an issue with your switch or your mesh unit, it could be an issue just with that device. So ultimately, it's a good idea to reboot every single one of those things. To reboot the ONT and the router, all you have to do is unplug them from electrical power, generally for about 10 or 15 seconds, and then plug them back in. The ONT will usually take about three minutes to reboot, the router more like five. If you need a software update on one of your devices, rebooting it will cause that update to trigger, and in that case it may take about 10 minutes to reboot. Um, in either case, those are very simple things to do. Unplug it, plug it back in, and if your problem's not fixed, you can then move on to further network elements like switches or mesh units. Um, if the problem you're having is on a single device, one phone, one computer, one tablet, reboot that first. If it's on all of your devices, start with the ONT and router. If that doesn't fix it, move on to anything else that's involved in the network. Move your router to a different location. Wi-Fi is a very particular form of communication using radio waves that is susceptible to many different kinds of interference. The most common interference is from other radio wave devices, garage door openers, baby monitors, even your microwave or your refrigerator or your air conditioner has an electromagnetic field that can interfere with Wi-Fi. There's also physical, environmental interference. If your Wi-Fi router is sitting close to something metal, if you have metal studs in your walls, or it's next to a beautiful iron sculpture, or maybe sitting behind a television set, that can cause interference. I've had customers with a mirror on the wall that just happens to be in the right spot between the device they're trying to use and the router, and that mirror is reflecting some of the radio waves and causing a poor signal on the other side. Wi-Fi interference is a very difficult thing to pin down, but a very simple way to sometimes fix it is to move the router. It doesn't even have to be a lot. Sometimes shifting it as much as three feet to the left or up will change the environment enough to fix a problem. We do want Wi-Fi routers as much as possible to be high. Higher is better. So if you put them on a shelf six feet off the ground, you're likely to have better coverage throughout the house than if they're sitting on the floor. Um, if your home is large and you've got rooms that just aren't covered well by the Wi-Fi, oftentimes adding a mesh unit will help. What a mesh unit does is it receives the signal from the router, boosts it, and rebroadcasts it. So if you have a mesh unit, you essentially have two routers in your home, and only one of them is doing the router things as far as giving addresses to your equipment, but they will both be broadcasting the Wi-Fi, and they will each be the center of, of a sphere of Wi-Fi coverage. Um, and with race equipment, you can have up to four mesh units connected to a single router, and those mesh units can be independent. For instance, you could have a router in the middle, mesh units on either side, or they can daisy chain, meaning you can connect one mesh unit to another mesh unit to extend your signal that much further. Mesh units can work wirelessly or with an ethernet cable. Um, given the range of Wi-Fi, 
if you are trying to place a mesh unit in a place where you don't already have good Wi-Fi coverage, it's probably not going to help. But an Ethernet cable can go up to 300 feet. So a very common way to extend signal is to connect a mesh unit via an Ethernet cable back to the router and you can get signal out to your granny unit or your garage over that wire and then you've got two zones of Wi-Fi, one from the router in the house and one from the mesh unit in the other location. Reset the router modem to factory settings. In most cases, resetting your router or your modem is not simple. You'll need to find the manual and look up the process. If you are a race customer, our customer support team can do that for you. That's generally not going to be our first way of trying to solve a problem, but it is definitely something that is in our toolbox. And if other solutions don't work, that's something that we'll try. If you do have race service and you feel that you may need to reset your modem or router, please contact us. If you're using your own equipment rather than the race provided equipment, um, that's not generally something that we'll be able to help you do, but we can help you to determine if that's something that would help. And check if your ISP is throttling. Throttling is the concept of narrowing the tube, essentially, limiting the amount of data that can be transmitted. Many internet providers use throttling to prevent congestion on the network. So for instance, during peak hours, they may limit the amount of bandwidth that any particular customer can use so that customers are not interfering with each other. Race doesn't do it. We don't have bandwidth issues because the nature of fiber allows bandwidth to be much larger than previous copper technologies would allow for we can set our customers up so that every one of them could be using as much bandwidth as their devices need and they're still not interfering with each other. So at no time will race throttle your bandwidth, either upload or download. If you are noticing speed or connection issues that feel like throttling, most likely it's an issue on the device side but call our customer support team. We'll be happy to do some troubleshooting with you and help you figure out what's going on.